Hey internet, it's me. Mire. Um, how have you been? How's life? Well, I can't really hear you. This is a video. Per recorded. As some of you might know already, I'm an artist for a living. I just light pixels all day. I'm even super lucky to be art director on a really cool games project, but it comes with a really big problem. I suck at coding. I'm really not kidding. I'm so bad at it that it gives me mental breakdowns. But today, we're gonna change that. I'm, I'm done hiding. I'm gonna do my first game from scratch with no experience. I mean, I tried some visual scripting languages before on Unity, or even touched a bit of Unreal, but yeah, I'd say no experience is my experience. Using Godot. Why Godot? Well, that's so funny you ask, it all starts. Because of my frequent mental breakdowns, I came up with a very useful trick in order to survive. Making checklists. First on a checklist. Buy toilet paper? Sorry, wrong checklist. So let's think what we need first. A game needs a game idea. Everyone has a dream game idea they want to do, often in MMORPG for some reason. My dream game is just micromanaging, I guess. <laughs> I've always dreamed of having an army of little guys doing things for me, like boring and repetitive tasks that are very annoying and... Yeah, I know it's not really a game idea, but let's just see where it takes us. My first step, as I'm an artiste myself, is to make art. So let's open Photoshop and just draw what comes to mind. A grey gloomy sky, a mysterious dark figure in a background with some funky eyes, and a ball as a hand. Hands are notoriously hard to draw, you know? Here, this will be the player, making him feel powerful and godlike. So, let's put this in Godot. Should be easy, right? Okay, okay, maybe let's follow a quick tutorial first. Perfect, I'm an expert. Back to Godot we go. Learning a software is always hard, so let's do this for real now. See, that wasn't too hard, and I did it all by myself. <clears throat> I mean, almost all by myself. We're still far from this being an actual game. What can we add next? It will be as follow. When you click, the god hand spawns a little guy. So cute, so small. Hey, that sounds really good. Boom, our game has a name now. Small. So, smalls can evolve and become bigger smalls. And then you just have to get to the final small without having them fall off the island and die. Ooh. Right now what I use as art is really bad. Let's actually make them cute. A little rock guy, so cute, evolving into a grumpy man. And then sexy rock. And then a grandpa rock leading to the famous hippie rock man. And then we have buff guy, long haired buff guy, and for the next ones, I'll let you discover them in-game. Feel free to add a like to this video if you enjoy Buff Rock Guy. Back to the game. Get the god to spawn small guys when you click with the mouse. Check. Create an island they can live on. Check. Okay. Create an island they can live on. Check. And now for the main gameplay mechanic. Smalls will evolve into their next evolution when they collide with the same small. That should be easy, right? It was in fact not that easy. The first iteration was create a bunch of smalls because the script was all broken. After consulting the gods and sacrificing my time and sanity, it works! The smalls are merging and evolving. I'm a professional at this. Damn! Now everything is perfect. We have little rock guys living on their small tiny cute island. But there's one big issue. Gregory. He's the worst small of all. Why you might ask? <laughs> Don't ask me, ask him! He's so awful that he deserves to fall for an eternity beneath the game window. And fortunately, my godly hands cannot interact with him yet. And that makes me very sad. So let's give the hand a collider and yeet Gregory out of small island once and for all. No, Jason, not you, you deserve to live. So now we have a new problem. Gregory is falling forever and it's using game resources that could be used to save Jason instead. I came up with a wonderful new invention, the kill zone. Any small colliding with this area will just get dissolved into nothingness. Perfect, now I can eat Gregory off of small island and he will cease to exist forever. Don't worry, Jason, I'll, I'll never do that to you. 
No, Jason, these hand physics are indeed a big problem. They're super laggy and don't work really great. The issue is that I'm forcing the hand rigidly to the mouse position, conflicting with the built-in physics and yeeting everything in the way. Not optimal. During a wild fever dream last night, I came up with a solution. I call it Project Tiny Hand. Instead of having the big godly hand linked directly to the mouse position, I'll create a tiny hand. Invisible, but acting like a bridge between the cursor position and the big hand. And all of that using Godot's amazing Joint 2D node. The tiny hand will be following the mouse, while the big hand will always want to go where the tiny hand is. They're in some sort of like toxic relationship, I guess? The best part is... It works first try. Thanks Fever Dream, you're my best friend. This is starting to feel like a game in itself. I'm a genius for learning all of that on my own. Genius, let's add options. We'll need some video options, some audio ones, to pause the game while the menu is open, to show the mouse cursor that was hidden, and a way to quit the game. Here's a spoiler for you. After two days of trying to get that to work, I'm definitely not a genius. So for the options, we'll only get the video ones because I could find a tutorial. And if you want to adjust audio, then just rip out the speakers of your computer, I guess. I'll also design a cute main menu just for the sake of it. Perfect. Unfortunately, the game loop is a bit too boring and redundant at the minute. Thankfully, I have a trick that's gonna save us all. It's my solution hat. Let's see what it has to offer. More levels? No. Gameplay diversity? <laughs> of course not. Game design? It's not my thing. All of those solutions are really bad because they require something I don't have. Knowledge. Ah, but wait, there's one left in the hat. Ah, here it is. Upgrades, of course. So, whenever you reach a certain small evolution, you get an upgrade. One upgrade is increasing the island size by simply tweening the colliders and changing the sprite of the island. Another upgrade to speed up the endgame is to change the small that the hand spawns by its next evolution. That fixes the boring part, so let's add great juicy feedback for the players. Some little particles when we spawn a new small, some more particles when two small merge together. Move the island up and down just a tiny bit to make it feel alive. Animate the clouds with a shader I stole online. And adding a UI indicator when the hand is in spawn mode or in push mode. Let's make it more of a hand too, by the way. Well, this is looking amazing. After a solid two weeks of work, I feel like I understand code better than ever. I only have a mental breakdown once a day now. We don't really have much left to do, but here comes the juicy juice of it all. Audio feedback. Every time a spawn smalls, I select a random sound effect from a list I made. And also, fantastic news, my friend Sam, who's actually way too talented for me, made music for the game. Hello, my name is Samantha and I am the music composer. These are some stone effects I made for the game, as Remy suggested he wanted rock sound design. And so I actually used the nail on my fingertip to hit against a small vase and it produced the sound here. I put it into a sampler within Cubase and I was able to actually pitch the notes. I'm really a fan of cute sounds and cute music, so I just had to use this patch within Zebra 2 to create this poppy, bubbly melody. Thank you so much, I hope you enjoy the game and its music. The final touches after that are just some user experience. A tutorial adding a bit of lore to the game and also explaining you how to play. An ending screen showing you how many times you clicked and how many fallen smalls will come haunt you in your sleep. And it's a wrap. My first finished game ever with no prior experience or knowledge in coding whatsoever. What a cool milestone. It will go in the pile of stuff I'll never use again. Well, you can also try the game in the description below. And tell me in the comments when how many clicks you managed to finish it. I'm really curious. I think the minimum amount of click is around 741, but my brain isn't big enough to verify this kind of information. I had so much fun making this, and Godot is really the go-to engine I would recommend, as I found GDScript to be way easier to understand and to grasp from C Sharp, for example. It's also immensely rewarding. The little dopamine rush I got every time stuff was finally working. What an adventure. Okay, I gotta go push Gregory off of Small Island again. So I guess I'll see you soon. Ciao.